Good morning, everyone. We are on our last lesson on Samson. And the Bible tells us that whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your strength and might. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for waking us up for another day as we journey through the life of Samson and see what lessons we can glean. Lord, if we're honest with ourselves, we can see ourselves in a lot of what Samson does. And Lord, we can learn valuable lessons. We can look in our lives and we can reflect on how we have gone away from you. Because like Samson, we did not listen or we push boundaries and, and find ourselves in sticky situation. Some of which we get upset with you at when your words were clear. If we do good and follow you, we would have been in a better situation. It doesn't mean the enemy wouldn't be upset, but at least God, we will have had no guilt to say, or oh, we were disobedient. But we don't have to live in guilt. Like Samson, we can recognize that there's forgiveness in you, Lord. And we can reach out to you. And we can, even if we come tumbling down with the enemies, Lord, we can relinquish. We can, the bad enemies, and we can reunite with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I hope you have a blessed and amazing day today. So lesson number five, let's get right into it. Use your strength for God's work. Now, there's no doubt that a lot of people would think of Samson as one of the strongest men, not just in the Bible, but maybe in history. I mean, all these he-men and all these characters are after Samson. If you think about he-men and think about Samson, how Samson shook himself on the rope and how he even burst out of his stuff, his little costume and Oh, they've had a twist on them and, 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 and a word, a twist on all of them. But the Bible stories are the base of most of Hollywood. I was watching this program and it was saying, I was listening to this thing where this lady was saying that Hollywood, when it started, it had a, a, a great um, spiritual drive. And look at what Hollywood has come today. And you could possibly, there's some truth in that because I remember when television wouldn't have certain things on it because it was more family oriented. So um, most of these stories with strength, that's where I'm going, and these, these superheroes, I'm sure a lot of them, um, is Thompson was there and, and David, you know, tear up a line with his bare hands. I'm sure they were some of the um, possibly um, genius behind some of these characters. And obviously this is, um, this is how we need to make the Bible interesting for our children. Because, I mean, I remember going to the Bible myself and, and, and finding... I'm like, why people watch so popular? The Bible has better storylines in them. So obviously, as I said, this is partly true um, that, you know, we think of Samson as the strongest man in the Bible. And he has the superhuman strength that can tear lions in half and single-handedly kill a thousand people with the use of an ass jawbone and to carry two gates posts on his shoulders. So many people can do that. And to bring down a massive pagan temple. Come on, this guy was strong. But as strong as Samson was, we must remember that his strength comes from God. And without God, he is as strong as an ordinary man. Without God, there's so many spiritual truths. I wish time would allow me to unpack this this morning. Without God, our strengths, our assets, all we have, in him we move and breathe and have our being. Without God, all our strengths and everything we have is nothing, we're just an ordinary person. Without God, all your riches, all your academias, all your accolades behind your name, without God, all of this is nothing. And I hope we're teaching our young people this. And they, they tend to just, oh, I must do this. I must break the Sabbath. I must do that because I need it. I need to be successful. But without God, all of this success is nothing. Without God's even though Samson had physical strength, without God in his life, we recognize that physical strength becomes nothing. His strength lies in God. Without God, all our efforts are just feeble waste. You and I are also given by God immense strength. Though we might not be like Samson, we have unique strength that we can use for the glory of God. No matter who you are, 
what age you are, what group or ethnicity you belong to, or what the status of your life may be. You have a gift from God that only you can use. If only would you allow, avail yourself and allow him to use you to your fullest of your potential. Never ever commit the mistake of thinking that you are nothing and that you cannot contribute something. And that's why I like the song that said, if you cannot speak like angel, if you cannot preach like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus because you can say he died for all. You can be kind to the person next door. We all have a talent that God can use. If we'll just use it for his cause, he can build and expand on those talents. Often we see, we look at the story of the talents of just the money aspect of it. But whatever talents you have, whether it's a gift God has given you, when you use that gift to God's service, you'll be surprised how God can use that gift to be a blessing to you. Many people were singers, they leave the church choirs because it's not money making enough and they go into the employments of the world and they leave and walk away feeling broken, some killing themselves because the world has nothing satisfying to give. So many bright lights have gone dim and die on overdose or, or some other form of, of illness because nothing satisfies like Jesus. Nothing, nowhere else can you invest your talents in the cause of God. You might not make get wealthy in the world's eyes, but you'll be wealthy for the kingdom of God. That's exactly the same lie that Satan wants you to believe today. That you can be nothing or you can be everything by yourself. But without God, you will not prosper. We have different strengths. If it, would, it could be writing, as I said, it could be playing the piano. It could be singing. It could be encouraging one another, helping in setting up uh, um, hospitality or simple greeting people as they come into church every morning and every Sabbath or Sunday, whatever day you worship. Don't underestimate the same, the small things that you can do or other people, other people. And what you can do, nobody else can do. Sometimes we look at our messed up lives and some of you are looking up at the traumas in your life. One thing I found out that some of the difficult situation, yes, I've had a difficult life and anybody who knows me knows that. I've had trouble after trouble. Yes, 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 that is true. But I'm not magnifying my troubles. I am magnifying what God has done and how God has brought me through those troubles. And yes, I'm still seeing trouble. And yes, Sandra, wherever I go, trouble follows me. Yes. But if that's what it takes for God to save me, that is okay. That is okay. And I know you mean well. And I'm not glorifying in my troubles because I don't want troubles. Anybody know me? I don't want troubles. I just want a moment of peace. But apparently that's not for me. But who knows? Maybe one day I'll get my day of peace and jubilee for even for a short time. But the point I'm making is God has used, only when I came into chaplaincy, only when I came into chaplaincy, I recognized, oh God, these challenges were character forming. It showed me where I was weak. It showed me where God has worked and built on my personality and made me a stronger person. They were connector points that God used for my patients. Had I not had some of those experiences, I couldn't have been as effective no, I don't need to have gone through your experience. Some people think that because you've never had their experience, you don't have a clue what, what they're going through. No, that's, what, that's why there's something called empathy and journeying along with people. You can do that because God can help you to walk into those shoes with those people and be there. I don't have to have your story and experience to be able to be there with you when I'm genuine and I'm empathetic. But a lot of people are working for money and a lot of people are not empathetic anymore. So when God has given you some of these rough experiences and encounters in your life, if you look through God's lens in a new perspective, you recognize their connector points. The way you dress, the way you speak, the way you deport yourself, everything about you, God can use for his glory. And I'm telling you from experience, that's what God do when I go before my patients. There's some patients, the way I dress connects with them. There's some countries that I've been. A lot of people would say, oh, what, what, where does your accountancy and audit help your ministry? <laughs> it does. The places I go, the things I learn in their countries, just their name, the endings of their names. Just to say, um, your name, where, where are you from? Um, are you from so-and-so-and-so? -and -so? That looks like a Serbian, Serbian name. That's not like a, 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 a Croatian name. It's a connective point. I remember going into... Um, one Italian lady's room and she was dying. She was struggling to let go. I walked through the door in, I was a little bit more petite. And I walked through the door into this elegant piece of dress. Work, dress, simple, elegant. As I walked through the door, the woman perked up, perked up. 
and she pointed at me and her daughters said, wow, mom had a dress just like that. And you, there's something about you that remind me of my mom in her youth. Now this is middle Caribbean girl and this is an Italian woman. You'd wonder what we have in common. But this is how God connects us. She said, mom would walk just the way you walk in here. Mom would connect. Just there's something about you that reminds me of mom. I prayed with her. She was open for prayer. We talked for a while and she died shortly after. Her daughters were just thanking me, thanking me for coming into the room just the way I did because it brought back something to this woman from her life. Some peace and strength that she needed to let go. Some simple, right? A dress, an attire, a deportment. Everything about you sells Jesus. Everything about your life. And I'm not asking you to look like me or be like me because that robs a lot of people why I dress the way I dress. I'm just me. But don't underestimate the small things that God can use in you to be a blessing for others. The small things that can potentially occupy the biggest space in the hearts of the people whom you have helped. Sometimes it's just sitting at somebody's bedside and doing absolutely nothing. What we call as chaplains a ministry of presence. Now, the first time I discovered a ministry of presence, it was the most powerful walk away lesson for me. I was at Florida Hospital for Children. It was at ma'am night. And it seemed like I was the only one in my, my court of chaplains that had ma'am. But God was working in me and in me not wanting to be in the hospital. He knew I didn't like the hospital and God was working on me. I was numb. And that night I met this family. I, there was another night I met this lady whose baby died. The nanny, she was at work. When she called in to speak to her baby, baby had no cry. She didn't hear the sound from the monitor she had on the baby. And the, the nanny was doing her own thing and baby a son syndrome death. Yes, it was about midnight. But all I could do, what could I tell this woman about her baby? All I could say to her meant nothing because she felt guilt that she had to go to work for her baby. So I sat there. I held her hand. I hugged her. I let her cry. Let her did what she wanted to do. And I affirmed her. I said very little that night. But that was a powerful testimony. I, I sat with many people who were grieving and said very little. And they thanked me for the wonderful work I did. And I remember walking away and went, what, what did I do now? Just turn up and be God's hands. Be to them what they wanted me to be. You see, our small effort when gathered together will eventually become significant. The small strengths that you have will amount to nothing if you just keep it to yourselves. However, if you give that to God, Little becomes much when God is in it. He's able to magnify and make it big to fulfill his purpose. Just like a little boy who offered his small loaves and fishes, and Jesus turned that, those loaves and fishes to feed thousands of people in Matthew 14, verse 13 to 21. Therefore, offer your life and your strength, your little bits, your little moments to God right now, and offer it with a willing heart while you are still young. There's no better way to spend the time of your life, the prime and strength of your use, but in the service for God. And if you're single, all better yet. Don't worry about when God's going to bring Mr. Right into your life. You're not on a shelf taking up dust. It's the prime of your life, the strength of your youth to be of service to God. Don't let others tell you, oh, why are you wasting away like that? You're not wasting away. It's time for God to use you. Don't wait until you're old and, and struggling to stand and can't even carry yourself to attend church services. The time is now that you are your strength for the glory of God. And if you're, if you're just coming just now, God will still have you. God can still use you shaking and all, even in a wheelchair. God wants to use whatever little you have to make much. And when you give your little, no, you haven't lost everything. God will multiply your little and you'll be surprised to see how you're surviving. Just like the woman had that little bit, you, you could have thought the prophet was kind of facetious to ask her to prepare a little and to offer him first. And then she and her child could have the rest. But the woman recognized that he was a man of God and she had faith in God's ability and in his word. And many of us would have lost our blessing because we'd have looked at, oh yeah, he's feisty and cheeky. 
on the surface, it might be difficult to see why Samson was counted to be one of the heroes of faith. As this might be the case, we have seen in his life the faith that made him strong and over, overcomes the consequences of his sin. As Christians, we must learn these lessons from the life of Samson's. Let us all remember that our faith will only grow when we truly believe and obey God's word. Let us recognize that we can sit for the rest of our lives and we can beat ourselves up and we can look at all our past mistakes. But if only like Samson's, Samson, we can look back in our lives and recognize that, hey, I've sinned against God. But God says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, just not some. It's not your work. Is not the things you do in church that's going to make you righteous. It's the blood of Jesus and its efficacy, its ability to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And when Jesus paid the price for the cross, he completed his work. He paid the price for you. The work is already done. It's for you and I to accept it, accept that free gift of salvation. And yes, we're messed up. We'll always be messed up because we were born messed up. We were born with a propensity. They, 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 we were born in a sinful body. We were born in a decaying world. So our, re our very little effort at righteousness, the Bible says, is like filthy rags. So no matter how good we try to be, no matter how perfect we try to be, we're always going to fall short of being worthy. We're always going to fall short of being good enough. But in Christ, we are good enough. In him, we, we are everything. By myself, I'm not worthy. I'm not even worth it because I'm sinful and I always mess up, always fall short. But I can live with hope and assurance that like Samson, when I recognize that I have made wrong choices and stop blaming God for my mistakes and I come to him with a repentant heart and ask to forgive us, like Samson, I too can be in that hall of fame. If God has a hall of fame today, you can make it in that hall of fame. You are in God's hall of fame as a matter of fact, not because of your own doing, not because you're worthy, not because of your accolades, but because of the blood of Christ. And because Jesus says, when you give him your heart, when you come with a clean heart and a clean heart and mind, you don't have to go jump over bridges. You don't have to live a life that's hopeless. No matter how your family has mistreated you, no matter how hopeless you feel that you're always messing up, in God's eyes, you are everything. Dear Heavenly Father, we just wanna thank you this morning. We thank you for grace, we wanna thank you for mercy. God, we don't wanna cheapen your grace because sometimes we do that. We think you're all love and there's no consequences. But have we been learning these last five mornings so that there are consequences to our actions? But even when there are consequences, it does not negate your forgiveness in our lives. It doesn't mean that you cannot make good stuff from us. And if we're still in doubt after Samson's life, let's look at Manasseh's life. Manasseh passed his children through the fire. Manasseh was one of the most wickedest king in history. But even Manasseh turned from his way. And we're going to be surprised or some of the wicked people in this world. We don't know what they did at their last moments. We don't know what they said to God. But the Bible says if they confess their sins, and some of us are holding on to those hurts and pain that individuals have done us, it would be a sad shame if we lose our way and become a castaway when these individuals make it right with God. So help us to come to you, Lord, and to accept your grace and your forgiveness and to extend that forgiveness to those who are wrong us and to come to you and to let go our guilt and to allow you to make our messed up life new. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, pour your spirit upon us. Here we are. Use us for your glory today. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed day. Bless